So, hey guys, welcome to this course. And in this course, we are quickly going to cover what is WordPress, how you can install your own WordPress website on the server and take it online, how you can buy a domain, where you can find, and everything about domain. And then we are going to explore all the features available in WordPress so that at the end of this course, you can easily set up your own WordPress website, blog, or maybe e commerce. So, e commerce is a, a little bit advanced uh, in which you will need to add products and set prices and all that. Yeah, so we are not going to cover that currently. I want I wanted to create a really basic course so that you have a basic understanding of WordPress and all the features it has. In simple terms, I have packed everything like how to go from basic, how to buy a domain, how to buy a hosting, and then how to create a post, how to upload a media page, comments, and everything. So, these plugins and settings, I've explained everything in the course itself. And so, at the end of this course, I myself created this website for you guys so that I can write my blogs here and I'll be writing about everything I explain in this course so at the end of this course you'll find the article here where you will find all the resources so in this lecture we are going to learn how to use the Udemy interface so if this is your first time on your so if this is your first time on Udemy you can see it and interface something like this. So you will see. So if you, this is your first time and you ready, you will see an interface just like this. On the left hand, we have the video player, just like YouTube. We have the course title here, and if you want to read a course, you can leave a rating here. So this will track your progress like how many videos you have completed till now and you can actually share this course with your friends using this share button. So in the video section in the video player we have actually many options below here. I will be explaining them to you. First we have the play button. You can play you can play with this. So we can play this and uh, using this one. so we can play the videos using. So, so this is a video player here we have uh, if you want to go back and you, if you want to go forward five seconds you can click here if you want to increase or decrease the so playback speed can change the settings from here so this is a sound option you can mute and mute increase or decrease volume from here so this is a so this is actually a transcript offered by these speakers these are the captions generated by Udemy. You can change the font size of the caption, background opacity, and all that. So these of the setting icon, you can change the video quality. Here is 1080 pixel. If you want to go to full screen, you can click here. If you want to expand the video to go into the full into the full width, you can click on here, and this is the default. Below below our videos we have about this course for this course or about how many students are there, how many lectures are there, what is the total duration of the course, and then we have a QA. So QA is how many questions are asked in this course. You can find all the questions here. So which are asked so you don't have so if you don't if you have any question you can always go to QA and you don't have to ask the question same question again which are asked 
by the students. So these are the node. These are the, you can actually create a node here. Like you can point important locations, important points in the video. These are the announcements which are made by the author. So here on the right side we have every section. In section we have different videos. This is like just so this is just like index uh, on your on any ebook you see index page but this is just like index page in every index we have different chapters yeah, that's it for Udemy interface Udemy is not that complicated if you know how to use YouTube you can definitely use Udemy it's so easy so yeah that's it hey guys so welcome back to the course and in this lecture we are going to learn about wordpress for you i have already opened wordpress.com and wordpress.org now but what is wordpress.com and what is wordpress.org i am going to tell you the basic difference just like google wordpress.org is an organization which has a software which is called wordpress wordpress is a content management system so whenever we develop a site we need backend and front end and someone to manage that for us you will hire an expert developer to do it for you but they will charge you very large amount because it is really hard to call everything from scratch and from basic level so this is where wordpress comes in help because WordPress offers you easy to start WordPress website. You in just few clicks, you can start creating your website. You can create websites for yourself. You can create blogs for yourself. You can create websites for your clients and charge them money for your premium services. Many businesses around the world are running on WordPress because of its fast scalability and feature extensibility. WordPress offers so many cool features like plugins, themes, which are easy to modify, which are easily to custom, which are easy to which are easy to customize, which are easy to modify, which you can use to customize the website or your business fully according to your needs, according to your customer needs. So this is where the WordPress comes in hand. Here you can see WordPress.com is maintained by WordPress.org. WordPress.org maintains all the WordPress code, WordPress updates, WordPress plugins, themes. All the code is hosted by WordPress.org. WordPress.com is a demo site which is maintained by WordPress.org. Now I hope you have basic understanding of what is WordPress and what it can do. So. That's it for it for this lecture. I will meet you in the next one. Hey guys, so I am really excited to move it to the next section of this course, which is domains and hosting. These are the main building blocks of a good WordPress website. Now, in this section, we are going to learn about what is domain, what is hosting who is a domain registrar how to buy a domain and how to buy a hosting so let's start the very first lecture of this section in this lecture we are going to learn what is domain so first you can read the information written on your screen domain name is just an ip address written in human understandable form the domain name functions as a link to the ip address so Treat domain name like a phone directory where you write names instead of phone numbers where you find people's phone number using their names. That is how domain name works. So in this lecture we are going to see what is a domain. First of all I am going to show you a really popular website which is hostinga.com. So here you can see the domain checker. We are going to use the domain checker. So 
so what is a domain here hostinga.com is a domain because hostinga.com will be ad, will be mapped to the address so how this domain how this domain name works so here hostinga is a domain because hostinga.com points to an ip address where the server is running and sending us these and sending us this web page html css and javascript so yeah that's how the domain works they are just uh, ip address written in english let's say instead of hostinga.com we will write uh, http http 192.35.68.54 http 8.96.87.65.87.98 so this is actually an ip address but why we chose domain names over ip address is because human brain can human brain can't remember all the numbers because there are millions of billions of websites running on the internet and you can't remember google.com by 130 point and 65 point something similarly you can remember all the websites like facebook facebook or uh, there are many popular social networks you can't even remember up to 10 ip addresses that is why we use domain system because domains are easy to remember as they are written in human understandable form so that is all the definition of domain that is just how the domain so that is just how the domain name works there is nothing special about that this is very basic definition and i hope you understood that how the domain names works and why are they so used instead of ip address now here you can see dot com dot online dot xyz so what are these these are the extensions these are the domain extensions so whenever we write udemy.com so this is basically the domain name and this is the extension and with the domain name dot extension name it contributes to domain so domain name plus domain extension equals to domain and this is what address you need to type in your search bar to access the website so now so that's it uh, so that's it for this lecture and i will meet you in the next one hey guys so in this lecture we are going to see who is a domain registrar so remember hostinga.com we we go to so go to hostinga.com and here navigate to domain and domain checker now you need to understand one very basic thing so whenever we type a domain this is on the global level means there will be no another domain name with the hostinga.com name and domain names are unique you cannot have two domain names with the similar web addresses that is why we need you that is why we need domain registrars because they are the special authority which offers us to buy and sell our domain and they keep track of all the domains available on the internet hostinger.com is an example of domain registrar now hostinger.com alone is not the seller of these domains there are other websites like namejeep.com and bluehost.com there are many website sellers there is godaddy.com so 
domain registrars are just the special authority which can buy and sell the domains to the consumer and whenever you buy a domain from here so let's so domain name lord dot com let us search this and this will check it on the global level it means this domain is taken by some this domain it means this domain is already taken because it checks on all the servers in the world and domain registrar checks all the domains available by this name so it is says this is already taken you can take this domain and whenever you click on add to cart domain online plus web hosting this is around 0.99 per month so domain name so whenever you buy a domain name a global identity is created on the internet in this lecture we are quickly going to learn what is hosting so hosting is nothing but just a computer which is connected to the internet and electricity 24 7 so the basic difference between hosting and your personal computer is that hosting is connected to the internet 24 and 7 so there is no electricity loss internet connection loss and it is important that it should be available 24 7 because your website can't go down and if your website goes down you will be facing shut losses like in sales in your personal blog if you have your audience will face issues so it is not good to run a website on your personal computer because it can't be connected to the internet uh, always and also it can't have electricity in case of natural disaster or some uh, local issues you can't be able to shift it easily to any other state or any neighborhood or any other city but in this case suppose if one hosting or one server goes down that hosting provider will have several other hosting servers which will take your website online which will keep your website online they have they have servers all over the world so it is necessary you buy a good hosting and uh, it also provides better speed it is optimized for these kind of resources and this is all about hosting there is nothing much which you should or you want to know or that I know this is the most simple definition of hosting so that's all for the hosting and some more points i want to add here is that whenever you go to the website and so this address is where the host is located so whenever we type this address we are knocking on the door of the host and we say that we want some files so host says okay welcome to my home and i will provide you the files so in return the host provide us all this content html content you all should know that the web page is created using html css and javascript and these html css and javascript files are stored on the hosting itself so whenever we type the web address the hosting responds with this kind of resources and this is all the work it has to do whenever we type a url it provides us with the necessary resources this is the main purpose of hosting and this is all you should you need to know about it there is nothing much like there is no much nothing much rocket science or something this is the most simple definition for hosting so i will see you in the next lecture and let's continue this
hey guys so welcome back to the lecture and in this lecture we are going to learn how to actually buy a domain so i am using this hostinga.com registrar because it is also really simple to use and it has a nice ui so whenever we buy a domain we need to make sure that it doesn't contain any company name because in future they can put a lawsuit on you and you might get in trouble so try to be unique and don't use any other brand's name in your domain which is against the law and now whenever you find a good domain name like say jenny.com jennycannings.com or sam.com because you this is your domain name and you can name it whatever you want now when you click on search this will search it on the global level so this is the domain name here you can add it to your card and this will check its availability now as you can see this is available and we can continue to our card I am going to show you how to use hosting I every website on the internet works the same way you need to search for the domain name you need to select the domain and extension you want then you can easily check it out from here here you can select the period one year two year or three year so yeah that's easy so yeah that's how we purchase a domain you can check it out now and at the end you need to enter some information about you and yourself so that so yeah here when we click on checkout you need to create an account and then complete the purchase so that is how easy it is to buy a domain name so yeah that's it for the lecture and in next lecture we are going to learn how to buy a host so in this lecture we are going to see how to buy a hosting there are many hosting providers but i prefer hostinga.com because this is really beginner friendly and is also best performing now whenever you buy a domain so whenever you are buying because this is a really good website and they are really good hosting provider so this can show you up to 25,000 visits monthly and up to 1 lakh 100k visitors monthly now whenever we see this hosting now according to your plan you can start with this according to your plan you can buy this hosting or this hosting so when whichever you prefer you can you can always buy these hostings here you just need to select your preferred plan and then it will add this to your cart now we are when i showed you as i showed you in previous video you will need an account you just need to, to enter your email select your hosting select payment method and this will give you a free ssl also so single shared hosting 479 months plan So this is actually a really good deal for only $50 you will get a hosting for 48 months and they are giving us huge discount of $432 so this is the best deal you can get currently yeah so that's it for the hosting you can add payment method and buy it so welcome to this video and in this video we are quickly going to see 
how to connect a domain to the hosting so basically domain to hosting is nothing it's just uh, when you buy a when you whenever you buy a new domain you will get it in your account and then you need to buy a hosting and then there is an option to connect your hosting and your domain so as you can see this is my subdomain so subdomain is nothing but a part of the original domain as you can see here this is hpanel.hostinger.com so hostinger.com is showing me the hpanel here so simply i have created this subdomain try.avieducations.com as you can see my account has been created so currently it is not showing anything it is connected to my uh, hosting so our domain and hostings are connected this is all you need to see if there was my original domain then also it will show this page but remember it will not show this page until you buy hosting so you have to buy both domain and hosting and then only you can connect them so hey guys uh, welcome to another video and in this video we are quickly going to see what is a cpanel so cpanel is basically your control panel or uh, hosting panel also called as h panel and all the necessary tools all the necessary resources you need to control your website are available here so we will start with the hosting uh, control panel as i have used hosting uh, from the past three years and this is one of the best hosting you will get at this price point this is the best hosting with the best speed and the best resources also i have used many other resources but they were not as good as this and this is the most beginner friendly hosting i have seen during my entire career so if you are a beginner and want to start your own wordpress website then i will extremely recommend this hosting to you i will add a link on my blog post to the hosting of uh, hosting and you can buy it from there so let's quickly see what is the dashboard okay so this is my website my dashboard has everything for me as you can see here you can see everything and if you buy hosting from any other hosting provider you may see different than this but uh, these all features are available nearly everywhere if you can't do it from here you can do it from the wordpress dashboard Here we can see all my plugins and is all here are all my plugins and we can also see my dash you can see my website is using redirect HTTPS. These are the speech and security, automated WordPress patches monitoring and all that. So this is all with the cPanel. You don't need to touch anything much here. Just this is just for setting up your website and nothing else. So that is all for the this lecture. You can buy hosting and enjoy your learning of learning WordPress. This is not much. Uh, costly it is around two three dollars per month and every student can buy a hosting you can easily buy a hosting and take your wordpress website online and share it with your friends and family you can start your business you can start your blog so yeah this is all it needs to start your online journey and uh, that's all for this lecture i will see you in the next one hello friends and so welcome to the next lecture so in this lecture we are going to see 
how to install wordpress on our domain so first of all we'll go to our cpanel and here you need to select your domain and as you can see here education.com so here you can select your main domain and after this we are going to website and click on auto installer after going to auto installer we are quickly going to select wordpress and we are going to say try dot every educations.com password email and website title so opening this you are going to ask so you are going to enter all your details like username password email and we are going to see we are going to set by av educations okay then database we are going to select create new database password it can also be uh, anything and we can select this and everything is ready now we are going to move let's click on install so it says password must contain at least one number so let's say um, let's say install so as you can see it has started building my wordpress website it can take around uh, three to five minutes uh, depending on the server this is the best hosting other servers can take around 10 to 15 minutes also so you have to wait get a banana or milk or get some oh it's done <laughs> you can't have banana now so we are going to let's say force https and install ssl this actually provides me a free ssl because i have a business hosting so whenever you buy your first website domain and hosting on hosting you will also get a free ssl so you don't have to worry about anything you will get everything for free so i think our website is now created let's say how we can find a website let's see okay so let's say update your wordpress information okay so here is the link i was searching for the link so this is our website yo so as you can see our website is ready Now I can simply go to here and WP admin. Let's see if we can log into this. Of course, we are going to log into this. For any reason, if you are not able to log in, you can always change your WordPress website settings from here and forgot password or anything. So no, there is no need to worry that's why this is called control panel okay so finally we are able to log into a website and this is save let me save so finally this is our wordpress dashboard and i have explained everything further in this course so there is no need to worry so that's all for this lecture guys and i'll see you in the next one in this lecture we are going to learn how to log in to our new wordpress website so first of all so first of all we will go to our website here you can first type uh, the url of your wordpress website yeah.
we will enter a backslash and wp dash admin when you go to this url you will see a login form here you need to enter username or email address which you we have created when we installed wordpress on our hosting so here i am entering my username and password and click login now as you can finally see we have are logged in to our wordpress dashboard here in screen options you can see the all options which we, we are seeing here wp forms if we click it it will disappear from here and so this screen options help us to show what we want to see now on the left side we have dashboard now we are at our home updates notification are for login or website update next we have post in the post section we have all posts all posts and all posts to, to show all the posts on our website then we have add new to add a new post to our website then we have categories to add new categories to our website and then we have tags to create new tags on our website next on the media we have a library to see all the media uploaded on our wordpress website and then we have add new to add uh, to add a new files on our website new photos or videos to our website now on the next uh, on the next option we have uh, all pages and add so all pages will show us all the pages which we have created on our wordpress website and now second option is add new using this we can create any new page on our wordpress website on the next uh, on the next line we have comments the comments are done by the subscribers of our website and then the next we have this this is a plugin actually wp forms it is used to create a new form which we can use as a content form for our website on the next line we have appearance uh, we have uh, in appearance we have themes using this uh, you can see all the themes and add new themes from here then we have customize this option is uh, used to customize our current theme, current theme and appearance Next we have widgets. So widgets are used to widgets um, are used to add to add search bar or like recent post to our website or blog. I say. Next we have menus. So you this one this is used and uh, this uh, option is used to. And create a new menu or customize an existing menu. Then we have theme editor. So theme editor is uh, used to change the code of the current theme. And if you don't know how to code, then you should not touch it because it can break your website. Next, we have uh, plugins. In plugins, we have installed plugins where we can see the plugins installed on our WordPress website. We have a add new option to install new plugins, and then we have plugin editor to uh, to change the code of plugins. Then you should not touch plugin editor until you know coding or like PHP. Because WordPress is uh, coded in PHP, so you, you must know PHP if you are going to use plugin editor. Then we have users. In the user section, we have a 
like in the users we have on users where we can see uh, all the users which are able to access the dashboard of our WordPress website and we have add new option to add any new user for WordPress website like uh, you will add SEO manager or blog writer or say site manager you can add them from here and then we have profile yeah, which will show your profile and you can change your, change your username and um, email using this option here you can see my profile is admin my username is admin and you can edit and remote from here and here, here next we have tools so these tools are used to import existing website or export this website for you know, for the purpose of backup then we have here site health as you can see here site health status is good banner site has performance issues it will show bad or something like that next we have this this tool is also used for backing up and migrating our website this plugin and this is settings in settings you can see general settings uh, so writing settings are used for the blogger for for us not for the for like for the owners for writing the content for the website the next section is the reading section where you can change settings for the readers over it information on your website next we have discussion section so in discussion section we are able to change the set, setting for comments and all that next in media section we are able to change settings for media music videos so permanent links here you can in settings you will see permanent links which are permanent links of your website permanent links plays very important role in seo so take care of uh, so you should uh, take care of these things and next to privacy and this light speed cache so this this is a caching plugin it is used to uh, speed up uh, the performance of our website you can see all the options so i hope now you have a basic understanding of uh, what is a wordpress dashboard so yeah that's it okay so in this section we are going to create our very first post so yeah we are actually going to create a first post you know uh, we need to go back to our wordpress dashboard and uh, we'll go on post and first i will show you what post how the posts work so here you can see all post i don't have any post currently there are two posts in my trash so trash is just, just like a recycle bin where the posts are kept uh, after you delete them after you put them to trash or if you want to permanently delete the post you can delete them by going here and then like uh, we want to delete all the post in the trash folder we, we, we select this form delete permanently and apply so now all our posts are deleted now we are actually going to create a new post so by default uh, wordpress is giving this editor here we can see it post and lock so i will i will do it uh, using this okay so now we are so for our post we need to create and write a title i will just try to my first post then we are here so this is the main part of our post 
Here you can write anything like hello world. This is my first. So this is how you write your first first. You can apply hex to this using world Alice. World. So I don't use it. So I actually don't use this editor and um, editor. Uh, I will show you how to install another plugin which I use for creating posts. That is actually really useful and simple. So now we have created our post. Let's say you want to let's say you want to add add image paragraph form heading gallery list anything else. So like there are whole lot of things you can add here. And add I, and we can add many things. This uh, editor actually offers many things to create. So if you want to use this editor, uh, we can use this is also good. So we can also add image here. Uh, let me let me show you. This also for IMA image. So we can actually select an image from here. So I have this image I uploaded already. So this is how you can create a post and then the work is not over yet and here we have the settings not for image actually for the post but for the post we have the settings here you can see the permanent permanent link the categories so actually we don't have any category so for creating any category for your post you can always click add new category and then you will see our post and there is no parent category any category first post and first post first so this is our main category and i will add the first post as a parent category parent category to this Category. So let's see how this works. So as you can see, our first port is the parent, and this is the second category. So this is uh, like uh, this is like uh, you have multiple subcategories for the main category. So this is how these posts work. You can also actually add a tag here. Like actually, tags are tags are not the main not the main parameter to arrange your posts category. So that is how we can create a post and a category. Now we want to let let uh, let's add tag here. First post. And enter. So this is the tag. Then we are here. So you can actually. So let me first show you how this post looks. Let me publish it. So here we have actually three options. Like if we save is save this into draft. This will post will not be. So now let me show you, show to you. So as you can see, nothing is found. We already, as we have moved our post to draft. So this is currently in draft. Draft my post. So this is not visible. Yeah, make it visible. We will go to edit. We will go to edit, and then if you click, click publish. Let me show you publish. So now our post is live. Here we can refresh this page. Oh, hooray. So here is our first post. As you can see, and here are all the metadata available. 
this are our tag this is our tag and this is our category this is our parent category this is our sub category so if we click on our post as you can see this is our post if we have an option comment and all that now 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 sometimes the this image is not shown uh, on the main page of uh, our website so for that you will need to set a featured image whichever like uh, featured image is like a thumbnail whichever thumbnail you want to set to show your website visitors you can set it from here set as featured media yeah, that how it works we will now move to like next section okay so in this lecture we are going to learn how to create a new page for our wordpress website so first let, so first let us see what pages are currently created so as you can see we have two pages currently like home page and privacy policy uh, let me show you the privacy policy page so, here is our privacy policy page. So this is our, this is the default page which is over by WordPress for us. So let me close this and this. So now we are going to create a new page. For page we are going to create our first page. So we have page attributes, page parent and order. So by creating our first page, we can write content here. You can add a line called image or whatever you want. So you can also you can create a page like post, but I but there is a difference between page and post. Um, which I will tell you in next lecture. But for current uh, uh, scenario, pages. Uh, so page you can uh, similarly you can create a new page. This is uh, and you can write here. Uh, this is the my first page. So this uh, if you publish this, this will actually be visible on the um, URL which you will get a error after publishing it in the page also page also we can add paragraph image forms list adding like because all this will be something we can add a file media text and group column buttons so there are many options uh, so every different uh, editor has these options and you can uh, you can you can add, add these things so these are the default page with this editor open select games page what we do services services get in touch like this is our contact page and this is our work page so let me show you Let's create a services page and publish this. So our our page is now live. Now we will open this uh, and see this is our first page. So this is really cool. So let's close this. So yeah, that's how you can create a page. There is not much to learn. Uh, it really depends on the editor you use. There are many many plugins available to create beautiful pages. Uh, visual, some of them are Visual Composer and Elementor. 
you can find many tutorials available on YouTube also to create beautiful pages. But, uh, but this, these are the basics. Uh, that's how we always create pages. So yeah, that's it for this lecture. And I will meet. Uh, see you in next lecture. Okay. So in this video, we are going to see what is the difference between a WordPress page and the WordPress post. So to quickly show you the difference, I'm going to go here about my page in my about page and let's see. So in the page we have a this nice title and then we have all the info and then we have footer and the end so page is all about this and let's see what is a WordPress post. So we are going to post and all posts. So as you can see, there is the post. Let me quickly create a post for you guys and let me quickly show you the difference. So here we are going to say hello world. Then I think so, so this is my first post and so let's this is the category you can also add a category here so let's add the category tags and visual media i'm not going to add that currently and we are say publish so it is publishing now my post is available on the url it is loading boom as you can see the whole thing changes so to quickly show you the difference i'm going back to my page and as you can see first of all the title is all different the metadata who created on what that is just created what is the category and how many comments are there but as on the page you can see there is nothing at the end you see there is a comment and logged in and all that and on the right side also you can see there is a sidebar where you can search the posts and comments and all that so this is the most important thing to remember whenever you create a wordpress website you are if the if uh, it is a like if it is a static content like which is not updating you are going to put it in the page format because this is not updating but if it is a dynamic content let's say you have many posts many items to post you are always going to create a post why because the fact that how wordpress stores pages and post is different and also if you post, let's say you have 500 posts on your blog and if you create 500 separate pages your website performance can go down and it is always recommended to follow the standard and always use the post whenever there is a dynamic content which is changing like every day if you want to write a blog always you you should use post where people can comment they can write reviews and on the page you don't have these options available also on the other hand a page is a whole wordpress template you have to create everything like you have to create title you have to create high how the title will look you have to select everything but on the post the wordpress theme itself defines how the title will look and how the metadata will look you can control like if should if it should be visible or not but it is always available in your dashboard so always create a post whenever you have dynamic content and whenever like if you have daily blog if whenever you have dynamic content and whenever you have static content just if, uh, 
just create a page don't use post so in this section we are going to learn how to install the free themes for our wordpress website so uh, in this lecture we are going to install free themes it means that you don't have to go anywhere else to install theme to our wordpress website our wordpress website uh, first thing so what we will go to appearance so to install theme to our wordpress website we will go to appearance and we will go to theme as i already told you there are already two theme, three themes available but we are going to install a new one so to install any new theme from wordpress directly we will always uh, add click on add new let me leave this site our theme is currently updated now these are the world themes available there are so many themes available for you you can use any of them like if you want to make a blog use a blogging theme use a blogging theme or if you want to create a business website you can use these themes available like business consultant there are so many themes available on wordpress these are the featured themes we can see popular so these are the popular things it shows the 8997 themes available you can use any of them and the possibilities are limitless so first i will show you first i will show you this theme let us install this theme this is an element theme by element uh, this is how it looks we can install it from here let it install okay now theme is installed we can activate this theme directly here it's an install elementor I, we don't currently i don't want to install elementor so a new theme is actually it shows visit site let us visit our site go and see the magic as i have already told you that in some themes our our images our images this image is not visible on our first page so for that for that for that uh, you need to add the image so let me add it quickly for you so you won't run in, in, into any problem in future so let us set this featured image so click on this and set featured image and update okay now uh, the image is inside you can refresh this page and see that our post now have this image as the thumbnail so there are many themes and you can choose any of them which is suitable for your needs now previously we have two themes so now if i refresh this you can see this for this theme is active this theme is active and uh, so yeah that's so that's it for this video in the next video in the next so that's it for this lecture in the next lecture we are going to learn how to actually install these themes other than from wordpress so these are actually free themes all the free themes so whichever available so these are actually so these themes are actually free themes which are available they also offer some of many themes also over premium versions which you need to buy 
um, from their website and then upload it to so upload it to wordpress so in the next video i'm going to show you how to buy a premium theme and upload it to your wordpress website in the next lecture so welcome back to the video and in this lecture we are going to learn how to install premium wordpress themes to our wordpress website so let us move to uh, wordpress dashboard again so as you can see again we have these four things available now let's say you have to add a new theme but you don't want the upgrade theme you want a premium theme which offers more features so functionality and so now to add any new custom theme you need to go to upload theme and upload your theme file which the theme uh, which the theme manufacturer has given you so currently i don't currently i don't have an, uh, anything to to show you so to show you i am going to generate press.com so this is actually a theme website they they develop theme for wordpress uh, like they are uh, their themes are very fast and they are one of the best theme for blogging so you can actually install a free theme or premium so similarly you if you install a free theme you get more features but i am going to install a free one so you can guys like install the or download it okay let me download the theme this thing is downloading so the theme is downloaded now we go to our wordpress website and upload theme so choose the our theme which we have downloaded and okay and install now you can be friends i actually if you are going to create a blog then i would recommend generate press this is a really good and popular theme for your website so we can activate the theme now successfully it is successfully installed now we can activate it now the theme is activated we can actually go to our website so see the appearance now the appearance has changed completely now it is looking, looking more good here we have search widget this is recent post widget and uh, this is our home page and this is our first page so our both the pages are available in the menu so, like these are this is the first page we have created and this is the home page. Home page. So that's how we install. Uh, so that's how we install any custom theme. There are too many custom themes available in the market. So for this theme, uh, I will include the link uh, somewhere after this lecture. In the resources you will find all the important links uh, till the time you watch it uh, you for you till the time you will be watching this course i should uh, complete this uh, i will be completing this website for you guys so you can access all my resources here so yeah that's it for this lecture and we will move on to the next lecture from now okay so in this lecture we are going to see how to actually make our wordpress website mobile friendly so it doesn't look bad and mobile users actually there are more mobile users than compared to the laptop users because everyone do not have access to a desktop or a laptop so and also most of the time we spend our days on our mobile phone it is necessary to make our website mobile friendly. Yeah. 
So now move to move to our the website. And if you will visit our website currently, it looks like this. So if you go to customize. Yeah. You have three options like these are the three options in which to test your website how it will look on desktop, how it will look on tablet, and how it will look on mobile. So, when I click on tablet, as you can see, my website is changing accordingly. And when you click on on this, the look of website. So, the thing to make our uh, website because so to make our website mobile friendly the most simple solution is so, so to make our website mobile friendly the most common solution is choose a mobile responsive theme This is so I, that, that's why I chose actually chose uh, generate press. So generate press is a mobile responsive theme. You should always choose a theme which is mobile responsive. You should test um, the theme first. How it will look on the mobile and then buy it if you are going to buy a premium theme. So make sure you first test that theme on mobile. So I am here to I am going to show you some more some more things like here is the site title we can change it in it here so as you can see I removed the S so it doesn't look bad as the menu was coming on the next line or if I remove the S it will it is coming here. You can actually change the site title and tagline here. Here we name, I am hiding the site headline. And uh, yeah, so that's how you can create a mobile friendly website. You can change the layout for container. Container with uh, this really depends upon the theme. In every theme has different options for customizing your website. I'm going to delete this and hide, hide this side tagline. So, this is looking good. We can actually change all the colors here and fonts for our website. The menus, these are the menus. You can see the time there is a company there is a menu which is the home page and first page this is a different menu so when you need to create a new menu you need to create a new name and then see currently i'm not creating any menu and i am going to publish these changes so that our website so I'll change these assets currently. So that's it for this video. And I will see you in the next lecture. So here we are finally. So this is a also a very important. Uh, this is also a very important topic. So in this uh, in this lecture, we are going to see how to actually install free plugins from WordPress WordPress up and directly. To, so in this lecture, we are going to see how to install free plugins from WordPress directly and improve the functionality of our website. So first we will go to our website, our dashboard. So now I am in my dashboard and we need to go here. First we need to go to plugins. 
and then click on install the plugins i'm going to show you the plugins which are already installed there is already all in one wordpress migration i don't need this plugin so i will deactivate it and delete this plugin so always remember guys you don't need to install too many plugins uh, they will slow your website and the plugins uh, which you do not want to use you can actually deactivate them and delete them accordingly do not delete uh, so you should never delete the plugin which uh, will affect the functionality of your website now i'm going to show you how to install a new plugin so first we move to plugins and add new plugin add new so here you can see the classic editor so these are the popular plugins these are the featured plugins actually if you want to see popular plugins you can click on popular and call it so first i will start with you so first i will show you first and end so this is the current uh, editor which is used for creating the post this looks like this and now if you want to now if you want to change it, this um, appearance or change the appearance, change your current editor i am going to install this plugin called classic editor now we will click on install now and this is installing so now this plugin is installed finally So guys, don't click uh, too many plugins uh, at once. Uh, like to don't install too many plugins uh, at once. Like click on install now, install now, install now. This can actually break your website. So always try to always try to install plugins one by one and then act activate them one by one. So now our classic and uh, classic editor is activated. Now we can see uh, we will see how our editor is changed using that plugin. I'm going to refresh this. So see, so see how how clean it looks like. Uh, it how clean it looks now. We can add a title, uh, or text like anything like hi. You can create convert it to heading or whatever you want. So this is a visual visual editor you can also use the text editor like it will show you the html you can use it to create any post and leave this i will not upload that so plugins are actually a very important feature of any wordpress website they can affect the performance and features of your website there are too many plugins available like you need to create a contact form you can use this for the seo you can use this i will be showing you this plugin in the next video so to create an e-commerce store you will need to install this no commerce plugin and to improve the security of your website, you can install this chat box, chat box plugin. So these are actually really good plugins, and there uh, there are so many plugins available on WordPress for you to use. Like it, it says fifty-two thousand. There are actually fifty-two thousand plugins on WordPress. So you can imagine how how many. People are working on this uh, WordPress, WordPress technology. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you have any doubt, you can ask me. So in this video, in this lecture, we are going to learn how to install premium plugins. How to install premium plugins. So. Some plugins are not actually available on WordPress. Words. So some when you go to install it, then we go to add new plugins. So some plugins are not actually available here. 
So, if you see this plugin, if you see this plugin, there is a this switch. So, this plugin is used to backup and update and update your website. So, backup and move your website to another domain. So, this is basically a So this is actually a basic plugin. After installing this, they have they will ask, ask you to they will ask for an option which is available to actually update your plugin to pro version, which will unlock more functionality. Um, So for, to show you how to install premium plugins, actually I'm going to use the SEO. Use the SEO. This is a plugin, very popular plugin used for searching and optimization. Used to install search engine optimization functionality on any WordPress website. So okay, so here it shows that used SEO premium now. So currently I'm going to call the free version. And I will download it. So now my plugin is downloaded. I will go to uh, plugins and upload plugin. So, uh, so to add any plugin, you need to choose the plugin. So to, you, to add any plugin, you need to upload the plugin. So here this is the plugin I have downloaded. And now I have to install it. Install, click on install now. Let it take some time because it actually it actually changes the code on the backend. This is it says I'm plugging the package, installing the plugin. So our plugin is now successfully installed. Our plugin is now successfully installed on our website, and uh, and we need to activate this plugin to actually uh, put it to work. So to actually work for with this plugin, we need to activate the plugin. I am going to activate it. Now you can see I installed this plugin called Used SEO. Now you can see it on our left panel. When some plugins will, so whenever you install any plugin, they will be available here. Some plugins will not be available here. So you can access them by going to setting and they will show you here like this is showing light speed, light speed cache. If the plugin is not available here, you can always go to settings and go to this menu. You will find the plugin here. So now this is the SEO plugin. We can now add uh, our WordPress website or the Google SEO. Here are the features. I'm going to turn up currently I'm in development mode, so I am changing this uh, okay. integration. So this is this these so this is how these plugins work. Every plugin has different functionality to help you improve your WordPress website performance, SEO. Uh, you can 
there are unlimited possibilities with these plugins. Mm -hmm. So I hope you understood how these plugins work, how to install and customize any plugin. Now I will leave you with these plugins and we'll we will meet in the next, next lecture. So this lecture is going to be short. I will be actually recommending some plugins which I personally use in my websites. And these are these are really good plugins used by major website developers. So dashboard. As you can see, I am already in my dashboard. So now I am going to show you some plugins. I will mention them in my blog post. I will be writing. So go to plugins and add. So I don't. I am not saying that you should install. I am just recommending them which I use. So number one is Classic Editor. I can use uh, Jetpack or Pro Security actually. But this plugin actually is uh, uh, is provided by Automatic. So Automatic is a organization which has developed a WordPress technology. These are all the all the functionalities. So there is all the functionality written for this plugin, like what this plugin can do. This is a security backup plugin. All many like this plugin can do many good things. So you can actually install this plugin. I am not installed, and I will be developing this blog for you guys. So let it install this plugin. Now we have installed your SEO and classic editor and this jetpack plugin. These are the three, three plugins I personally use. So this is actually a heavy plugin. It to have many functionality. So this will take some time. Well, then we can see what are the properties. So let it install. So it says update, and we can go to here. It is downloading the plugin. I'm taking the plugin. So this is uh, this is saying that uh, I have already installed this plugin and this is fail to install. So let me show you another plugin which I use for my websites. So this is a really good plugin called WP Forms, which is used to create forms for your website. There is another plugin WooCommerce. This is a this is the most popular e-commerce plugin. Every e-commerce store is developed using this plugin. Then we have a WordPress, WordPress plugin. So this plugin you use to back up your site automatically, like daily even schedule to back up your website. So if your website have any error. Uh, so if your website face any error in future, you can actually 
restore the backup you have created previously. Yeah, so these are the basic plugins I use. Then, and then I use this plugin insert header and footers. Like some themes will give you the functionality to add script to your scripts to your website. Like you say, like so if you are creating an AdSense blog, you will need to add code to into your headers. And if you are using Google Analytics, you will need to add code to your headers. So for that, I use this plugin called Insert Headers and Photos. So that's it, guys. That's it for this video. We will meet in the next video. On this bonus lectures section. So first, I'm going to show you how to add a logo to your WordPress website. You can actually create a logo on Canva for free, or you, like you have. You, let's say you have a logo available for your website. Now we will need to now in this section I'm going to so in this section we are going to learn how to actually add a logo to our website. So first we need to go to our website is as you can see there is currently a text still coming here and I want to change it to a logo so currently I, I haven't created any logo but I will use any image if you have a logo you can select to upload the logo from here and then the logo will be visible here and you can see it like this select it will ask you to crop image if you have if you want to crop image you can crop or if you don't want to crop image you can skip cropping so <laughs> yeah that's how this logo looks so, so you need to you need to so I will So first I, I will download a logo image AB education. So let's say logo free logo. First I will download any any logo like we are going to download this logo. This logo now our logo is downloaded. We will select lo our logo from here. Let's try what to do this logo. And select and I want this to I want to crop this crop image. Now you can see the company name. Here we are here is our logo available. And we don't want the site title now, so we can actually only show our logo here. And now I'm going to publish this website. Now we will go to our website and see the logo appear here. So yeah, that's how we add a logo to our website. That's it for this uh, lecture, and we will meet in the next lecture. So in this uh, in this lecture we are going i'm going to show uh, the new wordpress feature which is automatic plugin updates which is automatic plugin updates so first we will go to our dashboard first we will go to our dashboard and then you can see here is an update available so this update is uh, this is update So this is actually a theme update. So all these updates like 
to but as words and work plugins and themes will be shown here you can create your theme from here so for automatic plugin updates we are going to here and here you can see the automatic enable automatic updates so when this uh, option is enabled in future whenever a new update is available for this plugin it will be automatically installed so you don't have to log in to your website every day and update to your plugins whenever an update is available you can simply enable auto update and now that's it now this plugin with classic editor will update automatically to the latest version whenever a new update is released by the developers so this is how this works really uh, you have to save the project back i will be enabling it and automatic updates for this tool and i will activate again so yeah guys that's how you enable auto updates that's it for this section now this um, now this way that's it for this finally we are at the end of this course i just want to wish you very very very, very congratulations that we have actually made it and uh, i wish you all the best for your future journey for your so i wish you very all the best for your future journey and i hope you would develop some great websites and for you and your customers and so now what what's next so now you have learned to actually create a website now you can create a blog or a website for personal use or to sell them to your customers and then now after completing this course so this website i will be maintaining this website kvedication.com this will be my personal blog here i will be releasing all the new here i will be releasing all the new content and uh, i will be sharing all the questions you have in this blog so we have collection we have the collection of all the questions at one place and you have don't have to navigate to another section or another video again and again so i will i will change the name of the post to the course name and then we will see you can always visit this page you can always visit this website i will be regularly maintaining it so yeah that's it all the best for your future I will also we will also be adding the Facebook group in the on your learning or this website. So don't forget to join the Facebook group. And there are others, there are other people to answer your questions. So that's it, and all the best for your future.